Shalom and welcome to Jerusalem Studio. An American mediation team led by veteran diplomat John Desrochers traveled to Lebanon last week to restart talks between Beirut and Jerusalem focused on resolving the dispute over their shares of gas deposits in the adjacent Mediterranean waters. Complicating prospects of a deal are the involvement of multiple parties in each area of dispute. First, geographically, the maritime slice lies between Israel, Cyprus and Lebanon. Then, there is this diplomatic triangle of Beirut, Washington and Jerusalem. And hovering over it all, and helping to delay progress on arrangements and agreements that would benefit Lebanon's ruined economy, is her submission to Iran's hostility towards Israel via their proxy Hezbollah. Is there a way to untangle this mess? To analyze this, we are joined from central Israel by Brigadier General in Reserve Yossi Kupelvasel, who is the Project Director on Middle East Developments at the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs. Thank you for joining us, sir. Thank you for having me. Also joining us from elsewhere here in Jerusalem is Dr. Neil Bohms, who is a research fellow at the Moshe Dayan Center at Tel Aviv University. Thank you for joining us as well. Good to be here. And with me in the studio is our TV7 analyst and host of Watchmen Talk, Mr. Amir Oren. Amir, give us a broader update on the latest developments pertaining to uh, the Lebanese-Israeli uh, area of operations. So long ago, Lebanon uh, was the most uh, stable and prosperous economy in the region because uh, it managed to stay out of the Arab-Israeli conflict. But um, in uh, recent uh, decades, obviously, it's a failed state. And uh, its economy um, is uh, getting from, from uh, worst to worst. So um, the Americans, first under President Trump and now under the Biden administration, saw an opportunity to let the Lebanese have some economic future, but by um, uh, getting into the uh, gas market, which, uh, of course, uh, comes out of the uh, sub-Mediterranean uh, resources. But in order uh, for that to happen, they have to finally make, if not their peace with Israel, make some arrangements regarding the borders, the land border, which goes all the way from the shore to the uh, Syrian uh, uh, boundary, and the maritime uh, border. Now, for Israel, strategy should be the more dominant factor, more strategy than the economy. Israel can and should be more generous to uh, Lebanon when it comes to the uh, last percentage point, whether it will be 56% to 44% or 58 to 42 is not that vital to Israel. But if it can give Lebanon a stake in better relations with Israel, so much the better. Um, for that very reason, Iran doesn't want any improvement in uh, Lebanese-Israeli relations, and it puts pressure through Hezbollah on the non-functioning Beirut government to stall. So after six months of uh, hiatus, uh, the talks resumed uh, at Nakura, uh, on the uh, border between Israel and Lebanon, and where the United Nations uh, has a post. It can host the, the uh, talks with the Americans as chaperones, but uh, whether they will uh, uh, come to fruition uh, has to uh, do with decisions made in Tehran. Indeed. Uh, General Kupelwasser, your take on this? Well, yes, I think that uh, definitely from Israel's point of view, there's an opportunity here if we can uh, move forward and uh, delineate the maritime border between us and Lebanon and uh, help Lebanon stabilize itself because we, we want to see stability in Lebanon and uh, add some more consideration on, on the Lebanese uh, I, uh, full portfolio when they come to discuss whether to escalate situation with Israel or not. That's a positive point from Israel's uh, position. And uh, I think, as uh, Amir said, uh, Israel is coming to these negotiations with uh, really intention to, to bring about uh, an agreement. That said, we know what, uh, what is happening on the other side of the, of the border. We know that the Iranians, together with Hezbollah, are putting all kinds of obstacles on the way to such an agreement. Just recently, 
some uh, political forces inside the Lebanon that are affiliated with uh, Hezbollah were trying to uh, force a uh, decision by the government that would uh, delineate the border unilaterally on the line that is uh, more to the Lebanese or the Hezbollah liking, to in, in a clear intention to uh, thwart the attempt to reach an agreement. Uh, fortunately, President Aoun himself uh, moved against this uh, initiative and forced the government not to accept uh, this idea of uh, Hezbollah. And uh, that's why the, the negotiations today are possible at all. And uh, we shall see if anything uh, comes out of it. But uh, Israel is really coming there with uh, good intentions to, re to make some progress towards an agreement, maybe even reach one. We have to understand that Israel is already uh, uh, extracting a lot of gas from, uh, from the Mediterranean. And it's the Lebanese, because of their poor conditions and their ongoing quarrel with Israel and the delineation of their line, that is not able to move forward with the uh, exploration and the extraction of oil from uh, of oil or gas from this uh, area, and this is in, uh, their interest to to allow something happen. Indeed, Dr. Bones. Well, if we zoom out of uh, this particular negotiations, we actually see uh, that the words negotiations came back to the region in a very significant way. We have uh, the Iranian American talks. Uh, in uh, Vienna uh, on the JCPOA. Uh, we have the Saudi-Iranian talks uh, in uh, Baghdad. Uh, we had uh, Antony Blinken uh, touring the region uh, recently uh, with uh, uh, the, the in, in, in London uh, trying to, to find agreements in cross the Atlantic. And now we have also this small negotiations, which by the way, uh, was actually advancing in the end of uh, 2020. Uh, it seems to be uh, promising until in the very last minute uh, uh, the Lebanese uh, uh, government uh, in uh, conjunction very much with Bush from Hezbollah issued a decision that uh, sabotaged it. And it seems uh, uh, that uh, a lot of that has to do with an attempt, certainly an American push, uh, but also something with the Saudis uh, seems to also accept that uh, negotiations are back. It's not uh, just about sanctions, it's about engagement. Uh, and the uh, attempt of creating uh, wins, victories with engagement is part of what is happening here. Uh, Lebanon needs these negotiations more than Israel needs them. Uh, General Cooper Wasser uh, uh, related to it. Uh, the, the Lebanese depleting uh, economy can certainly benefit from uh, the uh, ability to, to extract uh, uh, gas um, uh, from uh, the Mediterranean. It can only do that when there is an agreed upon border. Um, otherwise, it's going to be very difficult to convince any uh, company to help develop uh, an area that is under dispute. Um, Israel can, can, can use this as well, but uh, all the way to Tanin uh, and, and, and the north, uh, Israel knows how to defend its own uh, infrastructure. So Lebanon needs it more. Hezbollah, uh, of course, will always be uh, in opposition with directives from Iran because Lebanon should not be in uh, negotiations with uh, Israel. However, there's going to be additional pressures, uh, certainly at the time of flux uh, in Lebanon uh, as well. And if there's going to be uh, progress, uh, this can be uh, an indication of other things that can happen. Again, us uh, now, uh, when we are moved from the area of sanctions to the area of negotiations uh, that are taking place in a number of fronts simultaneously. Um, and so uh, this uh, Lebanese uh, arena um, is maybe a macrocosm for a much larger dynamic of uh, attempts to engage that is happening in the region. I would say that all of this uh, really uh, connects to one particular uh, player which was uh, referenced here, which is Iran. Whether there's going to be a way by a series of uh, moves uh, that uh, there's going to be uh, a, a, an ability to achieve a, a set of arrangements uh, that will further balance uh, the interest in the region. Uh, unfortunately for Israel, uh, it seems that Israel has much more to lose uh, from this than, let's say, the Saudis. And even if uh, issues uh, between the Saudis and the Iranians in Yemen, for example, uh, will be able to uh, come into some degree of terms, it's could be that the price that's going to be paid is that Syria and Lebanon 
uh, are not going to get enough uh, attention, something that uh, for us uh, in Israel uh, is going to be much more difficult to accept. Indeed. Mr. Olin, I'd like to uh, ask you three points uh, which are connected one with another. Uh, first of all, uh, with regard to the decree that they're speaking about, both General Kupelwasser and uh, Dr. Bohms, uh, the decree which was adopted uh, actually by the caretaker or a draft decree which was adopted by the caretaker government under uh, caretaker Prime Minister Hassan Diab uh, was of course averted. Uh, by uh, the President Michel Aoun from uh, the, the uh, Christian Maronite community, even though he is also uh, labeled and considered to be an ally of Hezbollah at this stage. Uh, it talked about uh, uh, demarcating an extension of about 1,400 kilometers, which is equal to roughly one, uh, 560 uh, miles. Uh, the, the second uh, point is about the Tanin, of course, if uh, there is some sort of an agreement, uh, and even though Israel is quite capable of defending the Tanin offshore uh, Gaza reservoir, which uh, yielded uh, quite profitable results and has even American stakes into it, uh, it would, of course, provide additional security not only for Israel's national security interests, but also uh, of the United States, since uh, Chevron is one of the stakeholders there. And the third point is the U.S. push. The U.S. push, of course, on the 15th of April, we're speaking about uh, under Secretary of State for Policy, uh, uh, David Hale, who came to Beirut, communicated both with uh, the uh, President Michel Aoun as well as with the caretaker, Prime Minister Hassan Diab, and designate Prime Minister uh, uh, Hariri, who both are rivals of one another, one supporting Hezbollah uh, and backed by Hezbollah, the other one opposed and backed by Saudi Arabia. So there is here a whole mix. How is Israel in the, the mix of all those various forces uh, able to maneuver, also considering the fact that the United States is currently engaged together with the French on a carrot and stick uh, approach towards Lebanon, unless they implement much needed reform that would salvage uh, the failing economy and basically the state itself, which is on the verge of collapse, uh, it will face impunitive measures both by the United States, France, and the rest of the international community. So you served a very appetizing buffet. I will only pick some of the offerings. Um, David Hale, whom you mentioned, is no longer there. Victoria Newland took over from him. He was a holdover from the Trump administration. But the policy is probably... Uh, going uh, to remain as it was because uh, there was nothing uh, particular uh, Trumpian or uh, Pompeoian uh, about it. Uh, this is uh, uh, American national interest. Now, you mentioned various Lebanese politicians. And indeed, this is the problem that uh, not all the Christians are Maronites and not all Christian Maronite politicians think alike. Um, some of the Sunni politicians, or even uh, we recently saw the Sunni Mufti uh, coming up for better relations with Israel, while... The, the Mufti of Tripoli, the in Mufti particular. Of Tripoli, the Sunni Mufti of Tripoli. Yeah. And um, the Shiites, of course, under uh, Hassan Nasrallah, are more extreme than the Shiites under Nabi Berry, the Speaker of the Parliament, and the Prime Minister is always a Sunni, as you said, regarding uh, Saad Hariri or, or Hassan Diab. So Israel cannot sort out uh, internal uh, Lebanese politics, which even the French are trying to meddle in. It is beyond Israel's uh, scope to do it. Also, once you get into uh, law of the sea discussions, you get into global issues. Uh, for instance, there are several uninhabited islets across offshore uh, from Israel. If uh, the uh, demarcation line uh, is measured from them, it changes the azimuth. Why is that important? Not only because of the slice of water and whatever is beneath them, because in the South China Sea, the Chinese are trying to put um, landing docks on uh, reefs and call them part of sovereign China so that they can extend their territorial waters there. And of course, uh, Turkey and Greece 
have a problem with whatever is the uh, economic uh, zone of islands uh, which are under Greece, but off the shore of Turkey. To translate in layman terms, this dispute on the legal level has implications on the greater power competition level, which may not... So is it is it 12 miles? Is it 200 miles? Right. Nautical miles, which is even more than regular uh, miles. Um, which is why you need a great power, a superpower like the United States, to step in and finally uh, serve as an arbiter if uh, its arbitration is accepted by the parties. And the General Kupelwasser, how can Lebanon communicate with Israel on a certain issue when, uh, even if it does reach a certain understanding, uh, Israel knows already before such a, a deal is made that Tehran is pulling the strings on this? Well, Lebanon can communicate with Israel. We did. We, we do. We have uh, all kinds of uh, uh, tools that uh, enable us to, to speak with each other when there are tensions and so on and so forth. And uh, we reach an agreement about uh, certain issues in the past, and we can reach an agreement on that issue too. The question is, will it stand? Because uh, in the end of the day, and this is what uh, General Aoun, the, pre the president, said, uh, what is needed in Lebanon in order to move forward on an issue as such is uh, consensus, is a national consensus. Without it, uh, nothing is going to be moving. And since we know what the Iranians are after, and since we know what Hezbollah is after, uh, the fact that we sit together with them and uh, with the Lebanese and discuss the matter doesn't mean that we can reach an agreement because any agreement that is going to be some sort of a compromise is not going to be acceptable to Hezbollah and to uh, the Iranians. And they will not uh, provide the support uh, that is uh, necessary for making something like that work. That is, uh, that is where we stand. And unfortunately, we know the Iranians in all negotiations all, all other negotiations that uh, Dr. Bombs mentioned is, uh, are uh, very uh, tough uh, negotiators and they are not going to show any flexibility and uh, they don't care about Lebanon. That's the problem. If it was only for Lebanese to discuss the issue, maybe we could have reached an agreement. But uh, the Iranians behind the scenes, are they don't care about Lebanon. They care about their interests. They want to uh, have uh, the capability to threaten Israel from Lebanon. An agreement on the demarcation of the maritime border is going to make uh, the, the capability of Hezbollah to threaten Israel uh, more complicated and uh, more absurd. And uh, this is something that the Iranians don't want to see happening. And uh, especially at, at these times when they need to have some sort of uh, leverage vis-a-vis uh, -vis Israel and the Americans uh, in the context of the negotiations over the nuclear program. So it's, uh, it's against their interest right now to let this uh, issue move forward. Unless Israel, I, and I don't think it's going to happen, is going to accept all the Lebanese uh, positions uh, as uh, they are presented to it, uh, and uh, then they, Hezbollah and the Iran will lose the capability to, uh, have to oppose this, uh, such an agreement. But this is not going to happen. So it's, uh, that's why we understand the, how difficult it is to reach an agreement. This is why the previous uh, attempts failed, and uh, it was always because of Hezbollah and Iran intervention. And uh, I, I'm not that uh, optimistic, or let's say I'm even a little bit pessimistic about the possibility of breaking through right now, which proves again and again that Hezbollah and Iran are the main reasons for which the Iranian economy is, is in such shambles. And uh, this is the reason why the Iran economy cannot regain the, the excellent conditions it used to uh, encounter in, in the past. And that's, uh, it's a pity. It's a pity for the Lebanese people because... You know, Hezbollah always presents itself as the uh, shield of Lebanon, protecting Lebanon. But in fact, what Hezbollah does is working against the interests of Lebanon on behalf of the Iranians. This is the, the poor situation we are locked in, and it's uh, very difficult to move away from there. And uh, it's frustrating for the Lebanese, and it's exposing the, the true nature of Hezbollah. Dr. Bonds? Well, uh, there are a few other... Uh, players in this game uh, that may make this fifth round of negotiations. It's important to note that uh, either different or perhaps uh, another chapter uh, that uh, will will yield 
uh, some potential different results. And again, the, this is all comes back to uh, uh, Hezbollah and Iran, and of course, the, the price of the, the Lebanese people are uh, paying. But just to, to take another uh, related event, uh, a few weeks ago, we've heard uh, of an innocent uh, shipment of pomegranates uh, that was captured. And inside, they were not pomegranates, but really millions of uh, captagon peels. Um, and they were seized by Saudi Arabia. They came from Lebanon through Syria. And this was uh, uh, something that had caused the Saudis to uh, uh, insert uh, uh, additional sanctions over Lebanon. And this is connected now to the uh, Iranian-Saudi uh, conversations in Baghdad that are focused, again, on two main arenas, on Yemen and on Lebanon. Now, the Saudi interest in Lebanon is, is twofold. They uh, were supporting uh, the uh, Hariri uh, government. Uh, we've had very interesting and somewhat dramatic uh, episodes that we've discussed here, including the uh, quasi-kidnapping of Hariri uh, uh, to Saudi uh, uh, Arabia some year and a half uh, uh, you know, ago and the beginning of uh, one of the crisis points. Uh, the Saudis have attempted to stabilize Lebanon from this perspective and against the Iranians. Now uh, they are saying, look, uh, we are now uh, looking at uh, with this uh, type of uh, uh, drug uh, uh, operation. This is a direct attack on Saudi Arabia. And if we are putting more sanctions in Lebanon, Lebanon has much more to lose. So they have at least what to discuss with the Iranians with the idea that you need a different uh, balance of power and that the Saudis can uh, push some of their allies in Lebanon in order to uh, tilt the government, especially if they get some at least tacit agreement of the uh, Iranian. This is partially what the Saudis seek to do. Will that's going to be successful? They're obviously not going to be able to uh, uh, convince the Iranians to live to leave. Um, but if we're looking at the Saudis, at the Americans, at the Russians, and the Israelis, then there's going to be a certain degree of pressure uh, on on the Iranians with one interesting difference. This pressure is not coming under the maximum sanctions that is really pushing and squeezing the Iranians. But on the contrary, with the JCPOA, it may come with actually alleviating the sanctions and giving the Iranians much more leverage. It's already perceived of giving them much stronger position within all of these series of negotiations, including now in uh, Lebanon. And then the, the, the big question that uh, the Americans and, uh, and the Europeans now will face with the JCPOA are we creating a scenario that is actually able to sort some of the issues and force the Iranians in the context of the JCPOA to move uh, and, and alleviate some uh, of the tensions in Lebanon, in the region, in Syria, uh, on, in and around the Israeli border? Or are we are coming back to the uh, framework of the JCPOA 2015, uh, celebrating a tacit victory and sort of hope that everything else will sort itself by negotiations by de facto? We've given the Iranians uh, additional uh, energy and momentum to uh, actually further uh, their influence uh, in all of these arenas, uh, something that will uh, force Israel to again react even more strongly in Syria uh, and in Lebanon and something that can potentially endanger uh, uh, the, the entire region and put it as another verge uh, of uh, escalation. I very much hope. Uh, that some of these uh, uh, talking points and these insights will be uh, in, in the minds of those negotiating. Uh, this, by what it seems right now, uh, there is a good chance that uh, the Iranians are actually getting on, the, on their upper hand. And that means that most of these other negotiations uh, most probably also will not succeed, at least the way that, uh, let's say, the Americans or Israelis or the Saudis would have wanted them to be. The, the, issue, the issues are rights and revenues. And one goes back to the 1970s, when Israel held onto the Sinai Peninsula for military strategic reasons, but also because it wanted the oil on the shore of uh, the Gulf of Suez. And um, it turned out that this sort of revenue and petroleum uh, blinded some of the decision makers' eyes. It uh, behooves Israel to be less greedy here and perhaps with American participation get some compensation, not directly from the Lebanese, but rather concede to the Lebanese even though they don't deserve it, so to speak. 
but get some other sort of compensation from the United States. Israel has enough gas from the Mediterranean. It doesn't really need this particular slice of the sea, even though it has a rightful claim to it. It should look at it in broad strategic terms. But earlier we spoke about this, that everything that is deliberated here may have precedence, may have implications for other areas, uh, including in the South China Sea and, and elsewhere. Uh, how can uh, Israel concede to something if it would ultimately change the equilibrium leave, of the world? Leave it to the lawyers without prejudice. They will find a formula uh, to give Israel the chance to concede without putting it in such terms as a concession. Perhaps it will be a lease for 99 years. We have really a few seconds left, so I, I'd like to ask you, uh, General Kupelwasser, really in, in one uh, sentence, can Israel accept uh, a Lebanon that collapses economically, considering the implications this may have for the security of the state of Israel? In Israel's uh, interest is that uh, some arrangement will be found and that uh, Lebanon will be more stable than it seems to be right now. That is uh, our interest. Uh, should we make such uh, wide concessions as uh, Amir is suggesting? I'm not sure, but we can find an arrangement. The problem is with Hezbollah. And I think that what we may find out is that there are going to be even some uh, tensions between Hezbollah and, and Iran, because Indeed. Hezbollah doesn't want to be seen as uh, the, the party that causes trouble to, to Lebanon, even though they want to see uh, Lebanon gaining as much as they can. Maybe Iran is even less concerned with, uh, with the well-being of the Lebanese than, than Hezbollah, and there is a potential tension between the two, even though Iran definitely controls Hezbollah. Well, that's all the time that we have for today, so I'd like to thank General Kupelwasser, Dr. Bombs, and Mr. Owen for being part of today's panel, and I'd like to thank uh, you, our viewers, as well, and we will see you next time. You just watched TV7 Jerusalem Studio. We encourage you to pray for the challenges raised in today's program. If you were blessed by our production, please consider supporting TV7 Israel. The details of our respective bank accounts for donations from Europe and the United States appear on the screen. Your generosity allows us to continue to serve God's calling, to broadcast content that truly matters through TV7 Israel from Jerusalem.